Hey guys, NerdKing101 here, and today we are going to be doing something a little bit different and taking a look at Dragon Ball Minus. We are going to go through the chapter page by page and panel by panel and talk about it, and then I will give an overall critique at the end. For those that don't know, Dragon Ball Minus was released on April 4th in 2014 in the Tonkoban of Jocko the Galactic Patrolman. The story is written and illustrated by Akira Toriyama himself and tells the story of how Goku ended up on Earth as well as the first appearance of his mother, Gine. The identity of Goku's mother is something fans have wanted to know about for years because we knew who his father was, but we never got anything on his mother, not even a mention of her. So, when we found out that Toriyama would be revealing Goku's mother, everybody was ecstatic. So that means that this story had a lot of hype behind it. So let's find out if it lived up to that hype, and let's get into... Special Omega Story, Dragon Ball Minus, Dragon Ball, Rocket Child of Destiny. We open with a narrator giving expedition, the Staying Warrior Race. At the behest of the evil Emperor Frieza, have been fighting day and night in order to conquer a great many planets for their lord. I'm not a fan of stories opening up with a narrator giving expedition, especially when the expedition is something anybody reading that material would know. In this case, it just felt kind of unnecessary. I think if you gave proper context clues to the reader, they would easily be able to figure out absolutely anything that was included in that expedition. We then get our first appearance of our main character for this story, Bardock, who kicks an alien, knocking it down. Now, I will say, but artwork in this book is very good, which is a standard for Toriyama. He's a really good artist. However, I do question why the alien Bardock is kicking is so much bigger than the ones that the other Saiyan is fighting. It doesn't appear to be about perspective, and honestly, I'm pretty sure they're all the same race. So why one of the aliens is bigger than the other members of the race by such a large amount, I'm not sure. Well, the other Saiyan I mentioned earlier gets the message on his scouter and informs Bardock that they have received an order. All Saiyans are to return to Planet Vegeta at once. To which Bardock looks on in confusion, Bardock asks him about it, but then begins to wonder to himself what Frieza could possibly be planning and why he's having them all come back. Bardock and the other Saiyan converse in their ship on their way back to Planet Vegeta, wondering to themselves what is going on, even stating that they've never heard of something like this happening before. When they arrive on Planet Vegeta, they notice that Frieza's ship is there, and they immediately wonder what it's doing on standby outside of the orbit of Planet Vegeta. Bardock reasons that Frieza being there and his orders to call back all the Saiyans to Planet Vegeta means he must be planning something behind the scenes. They land, and Bardock is greeted by another Saiyan whose name we also do not know. Something that does kind of bother me about this manga is how just boring and bland all the other characters are. The only characters that are really explored at all are Bardock and Gene, and all the other Saiyans who could have been used to expand on what we know about the Saiyan race are kind of just throwaway characters that aren't even important enough to give names to. It's not bad, it's just kind of disappointing. Dragon Ball Minus actually isn't that bad for the first couple of pages. It's everything that we're going to be reading from this point on that is really bad. Murdoch continues to talk to the Saiyans, and it is explained by one of them that he had been hearing the Frieza army talk a lot lately about the legend of the Super Saiyan, and they wonder to themselves if the Super Saiyan is some sort of god, which is obviously Toriyama referencing the existence of Super Saiyan God that he had established back in Battle of God. Now, I'm actually okay with them kind of alluding to it in this manner, because they're not straight up mentioning Super Saiyan God like Frieza or the Saiyans knew what it was. All they're doing here is wondering to themselves whether or not a Super Saiyan is a form of God. Frieza also talks to some of his soldiers about it, however, they just kind of go back and forth about whether or not Super Saiyan even exists, or whether or not it's an old folktale. Frieza also alludes to what he plans on doing to Planet Vegeta, but he doesn't outright state it, which I think is very weird, considering anybody who's reading this knows what he's going to do. 
there's no reason for Toriyama to be hiding his actions and trying to, like, subtly foreshadow what's going to happen, because we all know how this ends. It's like if you wrote a Superman story and tried to subtly foreshadow that Krypton was going to blow up. Why? There's no point. We all know how this story ends. It just feels like yet another wasted opportunity to have Frieza go into a more detailed explanation of maybe why he fears the legend of the Super Saiyan, where he learned about it, or even what his lie was, because Frieza obviously isn't going to tell people I blew up Planet Vegeta because I was afraid of the Super Saiyan, so obviously he must have told people something, considering how helpful the Saiyans were to what Frieza was doing with their conquest of the universe. Once again, it's not horrible, it's just really disappointing and feels like it could have explored a lot more or stuff involving the concept with this manga. We cut to a scene of Raditz and Vegeta, they're just hanging out on some alien planet eating, and Vegeta decides to ignore the call back to planet Vegeta. This is just basically explaining why Nappa, Vegeta, and Raditz were all off-world when the planet blew up. As Bardock travels back to his home, we get more narration that will explain things for us, because Toriyama refuses to have the characters do that through their dialogue and instead take the lazy approach of just explaining everything through boring narration, which I really don't like. This is one of the things in this that I think is straight up bad. A lot of stuff is just explained via narration and it's really boring. Even on their homeworld, Planet Vegeta, the Saiyans number are no more than a few thousand. As a warrior race, it was quite difficult for them to successfully raise children and in increase their numbers. Bardock arrives, and we finally meet Goku's mother, who I can finally talk about. And I am going to be honest, I despise Jine with a passion. Jine is a Saiyan with a gentle heart and an incredibly weak power level. She was constantly getting herself nearly killed in battle, and eventually retired to work in, like, meat production on Planet Vegeta, because she was always getting saved by Bardock and was like a hindrance to her team. But my issue with it is the gentle hearts thing. Jine being this really sweet, caring, loving person with a gentle heart completely devalues Goku hitting his head and becoming a better person. The implication of the chapter is that Goku would have been a good person anyway because his mother was a good person. It just really devalues the fact that Goku came from this fighting obsessed warrior race but still ended up being a good person. It devalues things like Goku's decision not to kill a hundred human beings and trade their bodies for Gohan's life in the Saiyan arc. And yes, this is canon. This is was written by Toriyama. These are the events that the anime and the manga and the writers are going to take into consideration when they write future Dragon Ball stories. But don't worry, we haven't even gotten to the really bad parts yet. Bardock and Jine talk a little bit, and we get a feel for their relationship, that they really like each other. Bardock really cares about Jine. He's also kind of a gentle person. He's not as gentle as she is, but he does care about his wife and his children. And that also devalues the things I mentioned earlier. Because both of Goku's parents were good, gentle people, so of course Goku is a good and gentle person. It completely devalues all of Goku's decisions in the entire series. It is then Bardock explains to Jine that they need to put Goku in a rocket ship and send him to Earth so he can be safe because he knows that Frieza is going to do something and has a gut feeling it's probably blow up the planet. First of all, it's worth noting that it was mentioned earlier that Goku is 3 years old at this point, which completely contradicts the fact that Gohan found him when he was a newborn baby. It is established in the manga that Gohan found Goku when he was a newborn baby, not 3 years old. But I'm just going to address the elephant in the room. Yes. Then putting Goku in the ship and sending him out into space, sending him to Earth to save his life and being two loving parents does basically make him even more of a Superman clone. In the original manga, it was established that Goku was sent to Earth to destroy the planet, and that's what always made him different from Superman. Yet, he did escape a dying homeworld, but it was all really a coincidence. He just happened to be sent off of Planet Vegeta before Frieza blew it up, 
and the reason he didn't destroy Earth wasn't anything noble or anything like that. The only reason Goku didn't destroy Earth in the original series was because of the fact that he hit his head and forgot his mission. His origin in this manga is literally the same exact origin as Superman. There's only two differences. Bardock is not a brilliant scientist that was warding them of a natural disaster that would destroy the planet. And Goku is three years old and not a newborn infant. Literally, the sign for those two things I just mentioned, the only thing making his origin not a 100% ripoff of Superman's origin, is the fact that another character actually blows up the planet. Because I believe in most versions of the Superman origin, it's a natural disaster, like the planet just blows up. All this manga does is hurt the integrity of the original story. It hurts the value of the original manga. But don't worry, it gets even worse. Alright, so I don't want to talk about the Jacko Galactic Patrol stuff, I just don't want to really get into that. But I do want to talk about the very last few panels, which are absolutely atrocious and an insult to Goku's character. Thus, Jocko and the Saiyan child, soon to be called Son Goku, took off for Earth. Not soon after, the planet of Vegeta and the lives of the great many Saiyans were extinguished at the hands of Frieza. And eventually, the well-raised child of destiny was faced unknowingly against his arch enemy. This is awful. This is terrible. This completely changes the context of the entire fight with Frieza. That fight was never about avenging the Saiyans. And Goku was never, in the original story, painted as some child of destiny. That's not what that fight was about, and it just, it completely ruins so many things in the franchise, because this entire chapter recontextualizes most of the franchise. While I'm not opposed to Toriyama writing his own version of Bardock that is very different from the one in the TV special, the one in the TV special had death and he was an interesting character. This Bardock is boring! He's just a nice, gentle guy that doesn't want a kid to die. He's basically Jor-El! This guy is basically Jor-El if he wasn't a scientist! This manga sucks! It's boring. It's uninspired. It contradicts the original source material. It recontextualizes the franchise and makes a lot of stuff that was really good in the original series not as good in retrospect because it changes the context completely. It's also a blatant ripoff of Superman's origin. It's almost like Toriyama found out people were comparing Goku to Superman and saying Goku was a Superman ripoff and decided to prove them right. But most of all, it's just uninspired, bland, and boring. Half of the new characters introduced in this that could have given us new insight into the staying race don't even get names or personalities. They're just there to feed expedition. There's at least two or three times in this where narration is used to explain things for Toriyama so the characters and story don't need to do it. Gina is forgettable. She's just a gentle-hearted woman that serves no other purpose than to destroy Goku's character and recontextualize everything that happened to him in the whole franchise. And even then, she's not even interesting. There's nothing about Gina that makes her fundamentally interesting to me as a character. She's lame. The big thing in this story was supposed to be we were supposed to learn about Goku's mother. We don't even learn anything about Gina. We just learn who she is. That's it. We don't even know anything about her personality. We don't know her hobby. We don't know why she a kid with Bardock. We know nothing about her. All we know is that she doesn't really like fighting very much, she's a nice person, and that she works in a meat factory apparently because she kept getting hurt while on mission. Like, what is this? It's so bad. It's almost offensive how little effort is put into this manga. You know what? I'm just gonna say it. I think this is worse than All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder. I think this is far worse than All-Star Batman and Robin. All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder is arguably the worst thing I've ever read. But at least it's not bland and dull and uninspired. In fact, at times, All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder is so bad, I find it entertaining. There is nothing entertaining about Dragon Ball Minus. It's bland, uninspired, and does nothing but hurt the franchise and has no reason to exist. This manga doesn't even have a... Stole. This manga is horrible.